Someone asked me in a video comment if I'd consider making a how-to video about adding hair or fur to a puppet. I do have a few behind the scenes shots regarding that, so here we go. I'm starting with a more complicated method. Here's a puppet with a latex skin. The skin has been painted with tinted latex so the paint won't crack or peel. This puppet will become a woolly mammoth, but I want the hair to be a bit thin so you can kind of glimpse the skin under it. To create the fur, for this puppet I'm using crepe hair. It's sheep's wool, boiled and dyed, and then braided. It's most commonly used to create fake beards and mustaches. To make long strands of hair from it, you have to unbraid it and stretch it out. You cover it with a moist towel and use a hot iron, pressing it down on top of the towel. At the same time you stretch out the braid. Within a few minutes the braid will turn into a long strand of hair instead. From this strand you can then pull clumps of hair that will have a pretty natural look. Since the puppet is covered with latex skin, you can use liquid latex as a bonding agent. I start with applying the hair from the bottom of the puppet and up. Each layer will slightly overlap the previous one. I dip a flat sculpting tool into some latex and press it down over the top edge of the clump of hair. The latex is milky white now, but when it has dried it will be transparent. Doesn't this take an awfully long time to finish? Yes, it does, but the result can create a very lifelike look. If you have decided to paint the puppet with another type of flexible paint, I recommend that you use a prosthetic glue instead of latex, something like Prose Aid or Telesis. Those adhesives also dry transparent. A simpler way of adding fur is, of course, to use fur fabrics or real fur. If you use real fur, the leather it's stuck to must be very thin or it'll reduce the flexibility of the puppet. Fake fur is usually the best way to go because the fabric will often stretch, a little bit at least, in one direction. Then it's also the question of using fur from a real animal, which I actually try to avoid. In this case I'm using fake fur from a winter hat I found at a garage sale. I'm cheating a bit with my bird puppet here because it will actually not be used as fur but as a covering of fur-like feathers. My puppet is padded and ready for its fur coat. I line up the puppet against the hat so I can see the broad shapes I need to cut out. This will be the neck piece. I'm using flexible contact cement as a glue. In my case it's Casco's contact cement which is easy to find in Sweden where I live. You can see that I have hardly added any padding at all to the puppet's neck. Just a few layers of soft yarn wrapped around the aluminum wire armature. This is because I already knew what kind of fur I'd be using and that the length of the hairs would be enough to create the shape of the neck. Contact cement sticks pretty quickly. You have to smear it on both surfaces, let it dry a bit, and then it'll really grab. Here I'm using a hot air gun to speed up the drying, but you can simply blow on the glue with your breath and that'll help it set faster. Try to make patterns of the fur that'll fit around the joints of arms and legs. That'll allow for better flexibility and better animation. I recommend that you trim the edges of your cutout pieces with a scalpel that will make the hair on the edges feather out in a softer and more natural way instead of the sharper edge the scissors give. On this puppet I have an attachment point for a flying rig in the bird's back and it's of course important that I don't cover that up with the fur. So I pre-cut a hole in the fur piece before attaching it. I want to add some character to the fur, so I use an airbrush and acrylic airbrush colors to softly spray on 
a darker color. And here's your prehistoric terror bird. Not the most scientifically accurate representation, but it did the job. The very simplest way to fur up your puppet is a technique I've used a few times. In this case, it's the row men who have gorilla-like bodies, or more accurately, B-movie gorilla-like bodies. The puppet body is very simply padded. I've just wrapped strips of thin and soft polyurethane foam around the armature. Here we have our fake fur, which is a bit stretchy, and used for teddy bears. I'm using a white pencil to mark out a generous outline around the puppet. You can find fabric markers in textile shops. I didn't have one, so I used a colored pencil from a set of many colors. Here I'm using a scalpel to cut out the shapes. I'm also using a rubber cutting board. Here's one part of the fur covering. I'm again using my trusty contact cement. It's just a matter of pressing down the fur onto the foam padding until the glue takes hold. The second part of this covering is an exact duplicate of the first part and is glued down the same way. The seam is pressed together using dabs of more glue and the fur around the seams is styled so it'll help cover the seams. A pair of small and sharp scissors is a great tool to do some final trimming and shaping of the fur. I did cut away a bit around the chest so I could add a latex piece over that area. Don't try to glue down any latex bits over the fur, it'll only look weird. Trim away the fur in areas like that and add the latex bits to the exposed foam under the fur instead. And you can also try to trim the fur all the way down to the fabric. That's basically the three ways I add hair or fur to my puppets. If you have any questions, just ask away in the comments section under the video. I hope you found bits of this useful. So thanks for watching and see you soon.